There are many types of paper and fabric you can use for collage, but you may not have ever considered this option before. They are relatively common, easy to get a hold of, and you may even have some lurking in your cupboard or a storage bin as we speak. This humble table accessory has so much potential and it's going unrealized. It's time to unleash the power of napkins. Napkins are one of my favorite sources of imagery for collage. They're very easy to use once you understand some basic techniques and you'll get beautiful results every time. So the one question I constantly get asked is, what napkins can you use? Any paper napkin with an image printed on it will work for these techniques. These can be small cocktail napkins, regular or large napkins, as well as skinny napkins. Any of these will work for creating napkin art. So once you start getting into napkin art, you'll start acquiring napkins everywhere. You might be wondering where you can get napkins. I tend to get a lot of mine from napkin exchanges and my friends know that if they have any leftover napkins from parties, to send them my way. Often I will go visit and they will hand me a ream of napkins. So totally take advantage of your friends. Something that they're just having hanging around their house is gold to you. So it's one of those things that it's amazing how people are so happy they're willing to take the napkins for them. You can also find them on online stores. One of my favorites is Ninny's napkins. It isn't the cheapest way to go per unit, but you'll find that they have a beautiful collection of curated napkins and you only need to purchase a couple instead of trying to get through an entire set of 25 or 30 napkins. And their images are really beautiful. And that's part of the reason that I like going through them, even though it's a bit more expensive than buying a set of 25 or 30 napkins. So before we start adding these beautiful images to our projects, we need to prep these napkins first. And that means we need to take off the extra layers of napkin paper from the napkin. Once these layers are removed, this will leave you with a clear and vibrant image that you can use on any project. So most napkins that you can purchase are two ply or three ply. So you'll either need to remove one or two layers of the background paper from your napkin. So some napkins are much easier to separate than others. You may be able to separate the layers with your fingernails, but if you do struggle with this, you can use washi or painter's tape to carefully peel the layers apart. When you get them started, be very gentle when you pull them apart as the napkins are still quite delicate and they could rip. So you'll notice that the first layer of the napkin that you remove is going to be fully white. But that second layer of napkin that you'll remove, depending on how the dark, the pigment of the printed image is, you may end up with a ghost image. And don't throw these away because I use these in my art journal with decoupage to create interesting subtle colors and textures to any art project. So they're a great thing to keep on hand. And here's just my pile of ones that I've kept over the years as I've been finding new projects to use them on. So if you find that you don't want to use the full image of your napkin, you may want to look at tearing it. But the best way to do this is to add water with a paintbrush around your image and carefully tear out the image. If you don't add the water, you're gonna end up with a pretty uneven tear. Uh, the water just gives you a little bit more control over the way the napkin tears. I do have some other tricks on how to cut out images from your napkins. So make sure you come back next week where I'm gonna go into a deep dive on how to get the best results in cutting and tearing napkins. So we need to find a medium that we like for adhering our napkins. Everyone has their own favorite. Mine happens to be Matte Medium by Liquitex. You can totally use Mod Podge or other collage mediums to apply to the napkins. I just happen to like the artist brands because I tend to get less yellowing and they don't have a really strong smell the way Mod Podge does. But the key with any collage medium you use is that it has a liquid consistency, something like maple syrup or a little bit thinner. So let's talk about applying the napkin. The larger the napkin, the more challenging it's going to be to apply, especially if you don't like wrinkles. So this first technique is for people who have never applied a napkin before. This is the easiest way to do it. So you want to lay out your napkin as evenly and smoothly as possible onto your surface. Then using a soft brush in your favorite collage medium, add it gently to the surface. Because the napkin is so thin, the matte medium will absorb into the napkin, sealing it to the surface. But you want to make sure you're not dragging your brush through really heavily. That could tear the napkin. I usually almost more dab than 
add a lot of pressure when I'm adding the matte medium on top. But what's nice about the matte medium is because you're working with a napkin, the napkin's completely porous. The nice thing is the matte medium is going to soak through and you're going to be able to attach it. So you're not going to worry about maybe not having your napkin in the right position. You can basically just lay it down, add your medium on top. The other option, if you want to make sure you have a really, really good seal, is to add some matte medium to the surface and then add the napkin on top. When I'm using a large napkin, I tend to do this working in sections. This is a way to get less wrinkles and more control over the image. Most importantly, the key for most of these techniques is not to overwork the image. If you don't feel like you have enough collage medium on your first layer, don't add more while it's wet. Let the surface dry completely. Then you can add in more collage medium to areas that maybe you have missed. Please resist the temptation to go over the wet napkin. You're probably gonna tear it with your brush and I have done this many times in the past. So please learn from my mistakes so that uh, you don't have to worry about your project not working out. So again, just make sure that you let it dry and you can add some more matte medium on later. You're not gonna tell the difference and if anything, it's gonna be stronger because of it. So when you are working with napkins, the color of the background matters. When you add your napkin to a white background, you're gonna get fantastic contrast. But what if you wanna add a napkin to a background that already has color on it? This is where you need to be just a little bit careful. If you add it to a very dark background, it'll disappear into the page like this. So part of your page planning will be deciding how dark you want your background and how it's gonna affect the napkin that you will put on top. I like choosing light colors for my background, usually applied with paints, inks, or watercolors. This creates a beautiful background for your napkins, but you'll still be able to see the images clearly on top. But what if you add a napkin and you find that it's disappeared into the background because your background's too dark? Then make sure to check out the video in the description below. I created this project specifically using a super dark background and adding napkins on top to show you a few different techniques on how you can pull back a muted napkin image when you're working on a project. When you do use napkins, you can use multiple designs on one project. By layering them, this can create a beautiful and unique background. It's like a good lasagna. The napkins become more than the sum of their parts. So the more cheese, the more meat, the more noodles, the better your lasagna is gonna taste. Same with your art. The more layers you add, the more beautiful it's going to be. But the key to this is to make sure that the layer below is fully dry before adding another napkin on top. And this is where you can just use a heat tool or you can let it air dry and it's gonna work really, really well. So I didn't wanna only show you how to use these napkins, but also provide you with a little bit of inspiration. So this painting I created for a friend of mine for her wedding. I had taken some of the napkins from her bridal shower, included them into the background of the painting. She absolutely loved that I included elements from her bridal shower into the painting and that just made the painting so much more meaningful to her. You can also use them on decorative pieces like a pumpkin. In this project, I was decoupaging dried leaves and napkins to make a Thanksgiving pumpkin. I also did this one where I started with a sunflower napkin image and added in some pouring medium. So there's lots of options on how you can use these in your creative practice. My favorite way of using the napkin is to use them in my art journal. This is a way to make quick backgrounds or create beautiful focal images in an art journal page. I tend to add extra layers of paint, extra layers of ink, and other mediums to add more color to these napkin images. I always love embellishing my napkin images. So make sure you check out the other videos in the playlist for more inspiration on how to use these napkins. Napkins are a lot of fun, easy to use, inexpensive, and you can create so many beautiful projects from them. I hope this has given you the confidence that you need to try this out for yourself. So come back next week when I'll share with you how to get the best and most precise images out of your napkins. In the meantime, check out this video on how to recover your napkin images if you add them to a dark background. I'll see you in the next video.